Hey everyone, Henry Maxwell here. Part three of the series. All right, I am ecstatic to see. Maybe we'll be finally getting towards the finale of this. Maybe we'll have another part to go. Anywho, I say let's just dive on into the rabbit hole and see where it'll take us. A little glitchy there. All right, back to where we ended there. The drama had, maybe we should start just one back one. There we go. For a while, it seemed as if everything had died down. The drama had occurred that day circulated for a bit, but it was quickly shut down. After all, how could kind, charismatic Milo ever do such a thing? Similarly, Desmond disappeared for a bit. Perhaps he was afraid of what happened. Perhaps he was afraid of you. Ryan had to, after his public scolding, head away from the public eye. Ooh. Oh, look how in love they are. Do you just see, like, uh, just pure love in their face, you know? Pure, pure ecstasy. Not, not the lewd ecstasy, of course. Not even the drug, just love for each other. <laughs> Man, ever since Milo would never hesitate to praise you, to defend you because to him you were his everything you had saved him once again and so days went on as normal schoolwork fun activities some dates well at least until one of the big projects for your class it seems Ryan has appeared again and he's my partner for the big project. Milo fiddles with his earring a bit. Oh, it's a cross. <laughs> it's a cross earring. Uh, while outwardly he looks uninterested, you can tell he's thinking deeply about something. Well, it's too bad that we can't get any dirt on him, huh? I'm sure I could find something that could destroy him for good. Honestly, well-executed sound effects for the cat and and their expressions, I guess it's just unexpected, but it makes sense. It's just such a unique style. He smiles sideways, his eyes deep with vengeance. I mean, it seems you know what to say to make him stutter. Sure I do, but it won't stop him from coming after you for that long. And I like to have some surprises up my sleeve as well. That's a bit boring, my pet. As much as I'd like to destroy him, in that way, my pet, I would like to actually pass this class, and this project is a huge part of my grade. So let's hold off of it now, all right? Milo makes a slight sound with his mouse. With his mouth. Mouse? <laughs> but that's no fun, my pet. Can't we rattle him up just a bit? If I can't get this project done well, then I won't be staying in this university anymore. Ah, <sighs> I am such a buzzkill. I was really hoping to discard what's left of that ego of his. I knew you'd like to see him crumble too. Of course, I would love nothing more to watch him writhe. However, we're supposed to be meeting up in a cafe 15 up in Cafe 15 to talk about what we're going to do. And I'd like you to come with just in case. Well, who knows if he'll pull something. That's a little obsessive. Down, boy! Down! Back, I say! Sometimes I gotta hit him with a stick. He grins a little too wide, a little too happy at the situation. We are destined to be together. You are too obsessive, boy. Is that a band-aid on your cheek, by the way? I think I just noticed that. Been looking down too much. Isn't that right, Ares? You don't have a choice but to love me. The response sends shivers down your spine. Oh, boy! What have we created? I've created a monster! That could probably... Do us harm, ourselves. 
maybe he's a little too perfect. Maybe that's the whole entire point of this is that betrayal in the end. Betray everyone that you come into contact with and eventually you will be betrayed as well. Maybe that's the message that they're trying to send here because I feel this manipulation and game that we're playing is going to come to an end real soon. We're not at the climax yet, but I feel like we're very close. You've trained him a little too well. As we walked in, we saw Ryan sitting at one of the booths. His face twists from contempt to annoyance when he sees that Milo has entered with you. Strange he's not in our group, is he? Milo and I are a package deal. Or are you jealous that you've suddenly become the third wheel? Ryan looks as if he's going to cause a scene, but Milo leans back casually. He strokes your hair and looks at him tauntingly. Are you trying to do something to my lovely heiress? Ryan grits his teeth and sits back. Whatever, let's just hurry up and get this project finished. For the next couple of hours, you and Ryan planned out your project. The two of you ordered some food and drinks, seemingly chatting nonchalantly about what to do. But underneath it all, it felt like you were pointing knives at each other's throats. Well, it's not as if this wasn't a world we weren't used to, battling with words. Milo would scroll through his phone nonchalantly as we talked with each other. But it felt as if part of him was always watching. As if finding a perfect moment of weakness. Scribbling down Ryan's ramblings, your spoon slipped and fell onto the ground. I'll get it for you, my pet. He ducks under the table and searches for a bit before placing the pen on the table and lifting his head. Your spoon, my wonderful lover. He looks at Ryan and smirks condescendingly. Ah, this lovey-dovey crap makes me want to barf. His hand taps on the table a bit before looking at his phone. His eyes dart around for a second before standing. Well, I got a jet. See ya, losers, later. Grabbing his backpack, he leaves the two of us alone. Finally. You chug down the glass of water after he leaves and slam it on the table. Somehow it tastes bitter like you disgust for him. He didn't even pay his portion of the bill. That low life. I'm tracking him right now. He's not that far. In fact, we might get some more money out of him with these pictures I found. Fun. But let's save that for later. He might find out you've been tracking him and he might turn off his location. Sighing, you fork over the money and you and Milo head back. Let's walk back to the dorms. I have to get some stuff before the next class. Milo smiles and holds your hand as you walk. But as you walk... Something doesn't feel right. You start to falter, your legs feeling weak, and my pet, everything goes dark. Oh, baby, we either collapsed from anxiety or we got drugged. <laughs> you wake up, staring at the ceiling of your dorm, lying on the bed. Milo is stroking your, stroking your hair gently as you sleep. My pet, you'll be okay, right? You look so peaceful, sleeping. I wish I could look at you for an eternity. You touch his hair and he looks at you, his eyes widen with shock. Ha! He hugs you suddenly, clinging onto you. You're okay! His arms tighten as if ever afraid to let you go. Ah... Uh, my pet. What? What happened? You passed out suddenly after we left the cafe. Ah, uh, did I now? You recall Ryan tapping his fingers against a table. His eyes were darting at the glass. Oh, I see what happened. <laughs> that snake really has it out for me, huh? Well, how totally unexpected. 
I knew he was up to something. He grits his teeth, and I can hear them grind against each other. Now, now, my pet. You'll hurt yourself that way. You caress his head, and he leans into your hand. <laughs> Cute. It seems that Ryan must have drugged me. Ah, uh, must have been the water. Dropping my spoon was the perfect opportunity for him to do so. How oddly clever for him. I sh should have- it should have been me! I should have been the one who was drugged! He clenches onto the bed sheet and his grip causes him to shake. Disgusting. He really doesn't know how to leave it alone, huh? Well, he should be given a taste of his own medicine. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. I see. That was a... <laughs> ah, drug jokes. All right. You tap your forehead as you think. Ah, uh, what would make Ryan suffer more? Hmm, drugging him back would be ample payback. You do have access to the chemistry lab. Watching Ryan shudder as his body collapses on himself as he did to you would be entertaining. Or, maybe he might have other secrets he's hiding. He might see it coming if we attempt to drag him back. Perhaps Milo's past of t stalking might be a benefit to us after all. Choices, choices. Milo looks at you eagerly as you make your decision. The best way to get payback... would be to stalk him. Obviously, the game was pointing us in that direction, so we have to go that way. Come on! Drugging's just too easy. It's just way too easy. At least give me a challenge. He would catch us too easily. Stalking is the way to go. Stalking him. Ah, uh, well, stalking is more something I did in my past. And isn't that perfect, my pet? You're already experienced. This time it's for a different purpose, though. And quite a noble one. Don't look at me like that. Won't it be great to get some vengeance for me? He beams, happy that he's being useful. Of course, my pet. I won't fail you. He smiles with an unsettling look in his eyes. You walk around your dorm trying to look for what you might need for this endeavor. You think carefully about what you would need to stalk Ryan. Cameras. Darker clothing. Ah, uh, are we stalking him in person? I've already been following him everywhere online. Turns out he's quite infamous. Makes me wonder how he dates at all. Is that a jab on me? Of course not, my pet. He must have begged you to date him. I can't accept it in any other way. His eyes flash a dangerous expression before settling back to his generally happy facade. I hope you haven't been keeping tabs on me as well. Well, if you had, it's not as if I would mind. He laughs a bit, if only dryly. Oh yeah, he's totally been keeping tabs on us. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Who's to say? Ah, uh, he's so much better at hiding his true intentions now. You are pleased at the result of this notion. Ah, uh, but we'd have to be a bit more hidden, so I got these. Are we gonna fucking jump up in an alleyway? Beat him till it dies! We gotta do that. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. They pulled out some matching hats that you had gotten. I think you would look good in them. Aw, a gift for me, my pet. I'm so happy. He tries to play it cool, but you can see that his cheeks have reddened quite a bit. It was hard finding something nice for you to hide in. After all, you look good in everything. For a moment, he seems caught off guard, his eyes widening a bit, before immediately going back to his normal smile. He puts on the hat and happily looks at you. If that's the case, I don't mind you choosing all my clothes. I want to become everything that you want me to be. Anything that will make you happy. 
Wow, that's a little way too obsessive. <laughs> Damn! Take a chill pill, bro. Like, have a Kool-Aid or something. His breathing seemed to be hitched, as if he was imagining being adored by you. <laughs> Maybe after we're finished. So then, how about we enact some revenge? It's what I've been waiting for. I can't wait. Good. Let's get started. Oh. Oh boy, baby. All right. Let's go one more. Let's see how quickly this one will go. For a while, we followed Ryan around, secretly and with gentle steps. Enough that he would never know it was us. But it's obvious enough to know that someone was watching him. At first, it wasn't anything. Harmless, in fact. We watched him, but never did a thing to him. But Milo had other plans. Online, he talked about his experience of Ryan bullying him and how it affected him, and it spread like wildfire. The amount of videos and comments defending poor, innocent Milo, and antagonizing, brutish, awful Ryan. Milo really knew how to play a crowd, it seems. But it wasn't just that. Milo would call him over and over again taunting him, threatening him in a soft manner, but nonetheless terrifying. Ryan, do you remember when you threw a brick at my head and I had a concussion for a week? Do you think I could do something similar to you? I have a rock that I think would fit perfectly in your head. I hope you're not thinking of leaving your dorm today to hang out with your friends. It would be terrible if someone burned up your new couch while you were gone. Maybe it would be better if you simply died and were reborn another person. I'm sure the world would be happier for it. Milo's words were simply the drops of water that caused the ripples. Soon, there were others that tried to threaten him through text, through calls, anything. He made others do the dirty work for him. How clever. Sadly, it made it hard for you two to do your projects together. In fact, it almost seemed as if you were the last of his more positive interactions. Ryan, are you doing all right? I heard that Milo posted a pretty damning video. Well, now that you were all that kind to him before, I just... I just want it to stop. No one will look at me anymore. No matter how much I block or change my number, they always find me. How long? How long do I have to live like this? I don't... I don't... He was practically on the verge of crying. The way he shook when he was talking. Please, just make Milo stop. Anything. I'll do anything. Anything. Anything at all. The thought of it made you smile. All right. Milo has been out of control lately. I can't promise that I can make it go away completely. But I will try to. You have my word. Upon hearing this, his shaking finally stopped. Please. Please. Let's do well on our project together. All right? Milo, as it seemed, never took his eyes off of you either. It seemed that he would always bump into you at random times and acted as if it were pure coinkadink. Even when you went to places you would normally never go, he would always find himself there. Looks like we, uh, 
kickstarted that stalking obsession again, huh? We look like we're in a bit of a hootin' nanny, huh? What a bunch of oopla, huh? He always knew where you were. Always followed you. Even in the dorms, you started to notice that things were a bit off. Items were slightly shifted in ways you didn't remember. Things that you had for a long time suddenly looked newer. As if someone were replacing them. One by one. Perhaps you were being paranoid, but you were losing things and quite quickly at that. If you were a bit more oblivious, you could have convinced yourself you were just being clumsy. He always asked Milo if he knew where you left things, and he would laugh and hand you an exact copy. He always seemed to have exactly what you needed. Ah, did you lose your textbook? You're so clumsy. It's cute. Here, I bought you another one. Oh dear, did you find your stuffed animal ripped? I did hear that sometimes there are rats in the walls. Luckily, I bought you another one. Aren't I the best boyfriend? Silly, you dropped your pencil case when you came over yesterday. I brought it just in case. Just like that, you were being watched constantly. You had pressed into your favorite stuffed animal's eyes one day to find a camera and split it open to find a recorder. You smiled a bit. He really was getting better at this. Good grief! We definitely made a monster, but it takes one to make one, huh? Damn! You dozed off every night with the thought of Milo watching you. That he was always there. But there was one more thing you wanted to check. He had invited you to his dorm to hang out for a bit. Milo, could you tell me where the bathroom is? Of course! Down the hall. As you left, you snuck into his room to dig through his backpack. Pictures. Photos of you in your dorm, out in your class, and from inside of your own pencil case. Items from things that had made an exact rep duplicate of, that he was sure you would never notice. Notes of locations of where you had gone and where to meet up, or places he had convinced you to go to. And of course, a recording device playing your voice over and over and over again. The thought of such an obsession. The thought of such an obsession made you happy beyond belief. There was only ever you in his heart, his eyes, his soul. Soon you thought he would be the perfect love for you. Wow! So, even with this un, super unhealthy obsession for us, our cutie patootie little pie that we are, Apparently, he's not perfect just yet. But dude, we've created a monster. We've created such a bad, bad, bad person. And to think that poor little Milo in the beginning was just so timid and so shy. Sure, he had an unhealthy stalking habit, but he just seemed like a pretty nice guy just wanting to fit in. Now, he, he's not a good guy. He is not a good guy. Anywho, we are over time, so I'm going to have to end this one here, but I am ecstatic to see the finale of this thing. I have a feeling that the next time is going to be a f the climax of this, and honestly, I really, really hope, I really, really hope that we get to see both sides, what we're actually thinking, what our true intentions are, and I have a feeling that we will. After all... It takes a monster 
to make a monster. But anywho, I'm going to go cook some dinner. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.